Now, I was always a people pleaser growing up. Like I recently, and when I say recently, at the age, I'm 52, not mm -hmm. scared to say it. At the age of 52, I just started setting boundaries in my personal life. Okay, I'm not trying to get too personal. Yes, you are. Welcome back to your Starts Now, the Happy Hour Finance and Business. My name is Dan Lane, and I got a special guest today. We're actually in D.C. Are we in D.C.? Nah, we're in Gainesville, Virginia. Gainesville, Virginia. Yeah, about, we flew into D.C. Now. You flew in through D.C. about about 35, 40 minutes south of D.C. Okay. Well, we got a special guest, Lori. She is uh, she works logistics over at Amazon, and we're super excited to figure out Secret Sauce because she's one of the special ones that actually... Did very, very well in your first year. Yeah. <laughs> so, Lori, um, glad to have you here. Thank um, you. I think even better. We're glad to be able to come here in this spot. Okay, cool. Quickly, mm -hmm. give us a little, you know, recap of your career. A little your bio? Journey. Yeah, a little bio. Okay. So, prior to becoming an Amazon contractor, I was in banking, retail banking, for 16 years. Um, when I left banking prior to, I left when I was a market manager or a market sales leader for B of A, Bank of America. Prior to that, I was a retail executive for SunTrust. Uh, when I decided to leave banking, I took some time off because I didn't know what my next step would be. I always knew I wanted to own my own business. And so Amazon afforded me the opportunity. So now I'm a contractor of Amazon. So I own my own business, which is Destin Logistics. Um, and we deal in what's called um, Last Mile. Mm -hmm. My team delivers packages. So those Amazon packages that you guys all order online, my team is the one that delivers those to you guys. That's crazy. So what made you say, I want to leave finance in the background of finance and go into logistics? I think in terms of the trajectory of my career, it had run its course. So you kind of know when you're done with something. You may not know your next step. I knew that I was done with banking. So when I was in banking, I had decided I'm going to go ahead and look for something else. Now, Bank of America came knocking and I thought, well, maybe is it banking or is it the bank? So when I went to B of A, Bank of America, I realized it wasn't a particular bank, it was the industry. So it was time for me to do my next step. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, my next step, I didn't know what that was. So I left altogether and took about a year and a half off um, to figure out things. In that year and a half, I read about the program, the delivery service provided with Amazon. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, let me go on board. So Amazon has a pretty rigorous process to get hired. So I decided to work for them first to learn more about the program, learned about it, applied for it. It took about nine, 10 months to get accepted into the program. And from what I'm told, less than 1% of the people who apply get accepted. Uh, so there's different stages you go through. And then at the end I got accepted and then I resigned from Amazon and basically am now owning my own business. To me, to be uh, an owner or an entrepreneur and be a contractor for a DSP with Amazon is like entrepreneurship on training wheels. Right. So they kind of help you put your feet in the water and they give you the guide rails mm -hmm. um, to kind of help you through the process. And how long did that take for you to like that whole transitional period? Between me leaving Amazon? And between you leaving Amazon and understanding the process that's needed for you because you were able to, to become successful within a year. Yes. So, well, I had help along the way. So I had a peer who kind of held my hand through the process. He's another DSP, another owner who, when I had questions, when I was going through, when I was, after I had gotten accepted, kind of walked me through everything, told me what I needed. Um, and, and being a DSP, it's a small community. And one of the things I found as a DSP is that they're all willing to help. And so because of this person, thank God for him, uh, 
it helped me to be successful. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. And your first year, we talked about this, right? You did uh, two million. Was it a, a, a little over two? Yeah, a little, bit a, over two. A little over two. Uh, around three. Around three. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You know, small thing to a giant. It's just a little bit. <laughs> just a little bit. I, I want to do more. It's just a little bit. All right. And, you know, did you expect that? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I expected to do well. Um, I think in order to be an owner in a DSP, you have to come with a certain skill set. Mm-hmm. And I was confident in my skill set as a leader, as a motivator, uh, in terms of my business savviness because of my overall background. So that piece, I knew I could run a business. Um, this business in, kind of stretches you more, mm-hmm. right? Because it's a very different world. Right. Um, it's different from banking and it's different going from a W-2 to a 1099. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but to me, the risk is worth the reward. So, so but... I'm glad you touched on 1099 because mm-hmm. a lot of people don't get, uh, you know, the insurance. You don't get the the security. You don't get a uh, lot. The benefits, right? Yeah. And but how are you able to recruit people? Do you give them a, a, a W two or, or do you give them a 1099? My team right. are W twos. Okay. So they are truly employees. So they, I pay 50% of their, their medical. I offer dental, vision, all that, right, um, for them. So for me, obviously, as an owner, I have to provide that and pay for that. So that's something that I have to pay for. Uh, when you're a W-2, the company you work for provides that, depending on the company you work for. Um, let me go back really quickly. So when I was transitioning from Amazon into becoming a DSP, which is a contractor, because I was an Amazonian, that afforded me an opportunity in terms of when you're an Amazonian, Amazon gives you basically 10K towards the start of your business as a grant. Mm -hmm. In addition to me being a minority, Black, they gave me an additional 10K. So you got 20K. Towards the start of my business. In addition to that, what they did was they paid me my salary as a 1099 for three months. So versus if I wasn't an Amazonian, I would have probably gotten the 10K um, because I was black and nothing else. Um, So that allowed me to kind of have some additional money set aside to really um, do everything I needed to do for the start of this business. So that helped me. Right. Yeah. And what was the split like? In terms of, when you say the split. In terms of you and Amazon. So no, it's a partnership. It is a partnership, but Amazon's my customer. Oh, you run logistics for Amazon. Correct. So Amazon is my customer. Mm-hmm. So they pay me. I don't pay them. Make sense? Mm-hmm. So, okay. So they pay you to mm-hmm. run the operation. So they pay me to deliver their packages. Mm-hmm. So similar to them paying UPS, FedEx, mm-hmm. the post office mm-hmm. to deliver their packages. You know what was confusing me is the fact that you got a fulfillment center here. That's Amazon and you're based out of the fulfillment I'm based center. at, so that's the benefit. So remember I said entrepreneur on training wheels. So they put some guardrails. So I don't have to worry about in terms of the overhead from a building standpoint. I don't have to worry about that because they provide the desk and they provide a lot of that for me. Now, what they don't provide for me is um, the liability piece of it. That's all on me. So insurance. the insurance whether it's medical, vision, dental, whatever, the hiring, the uniforms, the devices the drivers use, all of that stuff is on me. Um, I lease the vans. Now, Amazon assists, Amazon does pay for the gas for the vans. So there is a benefit to being a partner with Amazon. Now, I have to play by Amazon's rules, though. Yeah. And how strict are those rules? Oh, pretty strict. Pretty strict. And there's no leeway. Uh, no, so you play by their rules, but again, that's the benefit. That's kind of the two-edged sword, so to speak. But to me, it works. 
<laughs> you're like, what? <laughs> so what's the key to becoming successful in this type of business? Like, Come on. What would you say? Excuse me. No, no worries. worries. Okay. The key to becoming successful, you have to have the basic leadership principles or capacity, uh, acumen. So you have to come with a certain business acumen. Now for Amazon, part of their determining if you are able to function as an effective DSP is they look at your background. Do you come with certain skill sets? Um, you have to come with, because you have to be able to manage a P&L. You have to have some knowledge of that. Um, you have to be able to lead and motivate and coach a team. So you have had to, in my opinion, had to have uh, manage people. Otherwise, you may ch be challenged with this. So there's certain business acumen you must have in order to be effective, um, in my opinion. Can you do it without it? Yeah. But would you probably be a little bit more challenged? Yeah. Now, I'm challenged every day. I'm challenged every day in doing this because for me, in terms of the liability, like I can't rest until all of my team is off the road. Um, and that's because you don't know what can happen while they're on the road, right? You don't, from a safety standpoint, um, from a perspective of um, not just the vehicle safety, not just other people's safety, but for their individual safety. Things happen while the drivers are on the road. To them and with them, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. And when you refer to them, that means like other things can happen as far as like bodily harm. Mm -hmm. Customers. Yeah. I rate customers. I rate customers, yeah. yeah. That's a reality. Yeah. Now before we before I get to my next question, for the people that didn't understand when she said the PL, it just means profit and losses. Um for, what happens if someone steals the package? Does that fall on you or does it fall on actual Amazon? You mean a driver that Let's steals say the package? Let's say drivers stealing packages or you know, sometimes they drop off the package and then somebody rush to you know take it off the porch or whatever. What happens if something happens to the package? Does that fall on you and the, the individual? Yes and no. So we call that DNRs delivered, not received. Um, that's part of how we're rated. So that matters um, that the customers get their packages. So there's a, a, a yes and no. Those are tracked heavily um, to make sure that we don't have drivers that are you know, doing things that they shouldn't do. Um, but sometimes if you deliver to high crime areas, that's a reality. That's a part of doing business. Amazon takes that into consideration as well, though. Okay, that's good. Mm -hmm. I want to touch on you, though. Okay. <laughs> let's talk. Let's talk about me. Um, let's talk about you. So, you know, what made you go into finance? You know, is it something that, because this show is about, you know, it starts now for people that are uh, eager to get their career started or something that we can motivate them to really provide some tools for them to get them started. So it's interesting. So when I went into finance, so I had had my last child and I was home for about a year mm -hmm. and uh, my husband um, probably got tired of me being home <laughs> and <laughs> And uh, came home one day and said, uh, I think it was First Union at the time, maybe Wachovia is hiring. And for prior to that, I was in um, retail. So I worked for Circuit City as a manager, ops manager, all that kind of stuff, right? And then, so I said, well, let me look at that. Let me go see if that's something I wanna do. And so long story short, I ended up interviewing, getting hired, uh, became a branch manager, moved up, became a district manager, um, moved up, changed banks, uh, developed a relationship with my boss who became a mentor towards me. When she went to another bank, she recruited me to go to another bank as well uh, because my work spoke for itself. So I had, um, from a work standpoint, um, high ethics. Uh, I was driven in terms of my work and everything. So I made sure that I went above and beyond and I was a top performer. 
And so, which allowed me when she left to bring me with her. And then I moved up the ranks. I, I left uh, Wachovia, which was purchased by Wells Fargo, left, went to SunTrust, moved up the ranks there. Uh, and then, like I said, went to Bank of America and then eventually left. But kind of got into it from a standpoint of the husband. Um, but yeah, it was to me one of the best decisions that I made because it gave me the insight to see what a lot of us in our community can't see. So at one point, um, SunTrust had required all of their area managers to get licensed. So I was studying to get my annuities and my health, which opened up a different world to me. It opened up a world for stocks. It opened up a world for insurance. It opened up a world that I never knew was out there. And so, um, which was like, ah, so now I'm a big investor. Um, I have my own financial advisor who I trust because he used to work for me at one point. So I'm like, what do you need? Here's the sex amount of money. He'll be like, okay, what? And he will give me, hey, this stock is doing this. I think we should do. I trust him implicitly. Right. So, um, yeah. So now now. With my kids, so one of my peers opened up to me and told me about, I don't know if you know this, Cash App, you can send stock to people on Cash App. Yes. I just learned this about is, that. But this is recent. Okay. I it's I, yeah, I don't think they had this prior. I think this is recent, probably the, within the last year or so. Okay. Well, I just Maybe. learned about it a couple months ago. So now when I send a gift, it's going to be stock. That's interesting. Because when I tell people to send gifts for uh, my son, I tell them, hey, send it directly. Not just stocks, but I, I tell them send it because we have this um, 509 plan or 506 plan. One of, one of those plans. And when I tell 529. them, 529 plan. Thank you. Yeah. 529, I say send it to the 529 mm -hmm. plan, right? Mm -hmm. I, Help pay for his yeah, education. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll take care of the toy. Yeah. You just put that in there. Yeah. I think a lot of us don't really factor in how much compound interest can mm -hmm. really benefit us in the long run. Yeah. Right. And if we invest something, even if it's something small, but we continuously put it into it mm -hmm. over the years, it's going to grow because of the compound interest. hundred, hundred percent. So I just taught my oldest who's 22 mm -hmm. about stock not too long ago. And he was talking about making money. And I was talking about how he spends. And when Amazon did a split, Amazon, Google did a split. So a split means that they lowered their stock price. So if you owned one share of stock, when they did a 20 to one, that one share of stock became 20 shares, which divided the price of it. So it went down to, at, at, I think at its lowest recently was like 80, 90 something dollars a share. That for somebody who's gonna buy some sneakers, that's a share of stock right mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. So I said to him, I purchased a share for him. And then I said, I want you to take this other money and I want you to buy you some shares of stock. And so now he's watching his stock grow. But then he got a little nervous because he started to see a decline because of the market. Yeah. And I said, this is not a short term gain. This is a long term gain. So you got to let it stay in there. And it's uh, buy low, sell high. So I've been teaching him about that, like, no, let it stay in there, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, so that cash app thing is a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm glad you touched on that because Warren Buffett, uh, he doesn't, when he sees a dip, mm -hmm. that's when he buys more. Boom, right? yep. So it's, it's not worried about the, the transaction or the action that's happening. Yeah. In fact, once he sees red, that means there's blood on the streets. He's buying more. Right, exactly. Because we're not accustomed to this, mm -hmm. right? or we're not familiar. We're now becoming familiar because of the, this new urge and, and new push for financial literacy. Yeah. That we're becoming more adapt to it. But had we known this a mm -hmm. few years back, I think a lot of people would have been like, okay, they're not, they wouldn't be worried about if there's a dip in the market. Yeah. Right? They'll take advantage of the opportunity. Correct. Right. And people move out of fear. Right. Yeah. yeah. Why do you think uh, it's important to have a mentor? Mm. Um, that's a good question. How can I articulate this? To me, one of the best decisions ever. 
Um, a mentor is there to help you when you need guidance and direction on things. I think throughout my life, I have chosen and selected mentors. It wasn't that they came to me and said, hey, Lori, I want to be your mentor. Uh, in the recent with the peer, I was the one who said to him, you're going to be my mentor. I said that to him. Um, yeah, I said that to him. Um, from Stephanie, who uh, was my mentor and in banking and is now a really good friend of mine. Mm -hmm. And she actually is a UPS franchise E uh, at this moment. Um, she, I just kind of latched onto her knowledge. I asked her questions. Um, you just kind of have to know who has certain skill sets that you want to get better with and who has certain knowledge. And then just don't be scared to ask. Don't be scared. So it's funny because my son has asked me to be his mentor. My own son. What an honor, right? Yeah. Mom, uh, you That's know, I'm different. proud of you. Can you mentor me? He wants mentorship and leadership. Help me to become a leader. Help me to become a better leader. That kind of thing. Why? Uh, I know he wants to do some things with his life. He wants to go to the next level. So part of that, and so sometimes he has a challenge because recently we we're having a conversation and I kept correcting him on what he was saying and how he was saying it. And he was using a lot of fillers. And so he was getting irritated with me. And I said to him, this is a part of me developing you to become a better leader. And then he was like, okay. So you took it in. Mm -hmm. oh, that's it in. amazing. You know what's interesting about what you just said is because we were always taught that uh, when you're ready, a mentor or a guide will come. Hmm. And you're saying that it's the reverse. You can go out and select yes, you the can. mentors that you want mm -hmm. based off their skill set. Yes, you can. Why do you think there's that there's a difference between the two, the two narratives here? Why your narrative you feel that is like it's crucial to have right now? Well, I think people are busy. We have more pressure, more stress. Mm -hmm. As you're walking through the day, you're not thinking, oh, let me go mentor someone. You're not necessarily, because there's so many things coming at you, especially as an entrepreneur. Not only am I an entrepreneur, I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I'm all these other things, right? Um, life happens. Mm -hmm. So... Quick little story. Recently, one of my drivers came up to me and said, hey, I met this young lady who's interested in becoming a DSP. Can I have her call you? I said, sure, why not? In me having a conversation, she asked, could, could I mentor her? I said, sure, I'll walk you through the process, but here's what I need from you. So that conversation took place. I think some people are just not scared to ask anymore, which is fine. I think you kind of have to feel the person out to see if they're in the space mm -hmm. where they have the capacity to mentor, right? She recently sent me her resume. So I told her, give me a few days. I'm going to go through it and take a look at it. So I am open to, to mentor people because I was mentored. But again, I sought it out. So I have much respect for someone who has the ability and the courage to say, hey, Lori, can you be my mentor? Yeah. Like your son. My son. Yeah, no, that's wonderful. <laughs> How do you, what, what was that your It Starts Now moment, meaning the moment where you said, this is where I want to stay. This is, this is it right here. Once I experienced entrepreneurship, changed me. Mm -hmm. It changed me to the point where this is just the beginning for me. I'm looking for other opportunities actively right now, other businesses. Go ahead, come on through, guys. No worries, no worries. Come on through. What y'all talking about? What y'all talking about? Don't talk about this. Don't talk about this. See you. <laughs> I don't even know where I was just no, now. What was I talking about? <laughs> yeah, those are Amazon employees. They just interact with me sometimes when I'm here and they want to talk. Sometimes I make myself available sometimes. Oh, People good. need somebody to talk to. Yeah. Um, so entrepreneurship changed you. It did. It changed me. And so one of the things, one of the, I think you have to have your why. 
why you want to be an entrepreneur, because that keeps you driven. So one of the main reasons why I wanted to be an entrepreneur is I truly wanted to help my community. I also wanted to provide generational wealth. So those were the two determining factors. So I'm saying this to say from a help my community. When I, I went to Morgan State University, historically black university in Baltimore for a couple of years. Um, my family has a home in Maryland. And one of the things I used to do is on the weekends, on Sundays, go feed the homeless. So me and some friends would provide food. We would provide clothing, that kind of thing. And we would go pray with the homeless. And one of the things that I said is I would love to go into business with someone and buy up a block in Baltimore to do affordable housing. That's still something I want to do. Am I there yet? Not yet. Um, so I'm, I'm looking, I'm actively looking for opportunities, meaning to open up more businesses so that I can fulfill that. So I truly want to help my community. When I say help, I truly mean help. Um, give back. So that's a driving force for me. It's inspiring right there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where did that passion come from? I think growing up, so I grew up, my mom stayed home when we were growing up. There's four of us, two girls, two boys. The girls are older. And my dad was in the military. So we traveled. So I was able to see Europe. I lived in Italy. I lived in Germany. I spent my high school years in Germany, my elementary years. And then we lived up and down the East Coast, New York, New Jersey, um, Georgia, Maryland is where dad settled. But I was able to see that those who didn't come from where I came from, some of them were less fortunate, right? And I think also because of my belief system, it helped me to appreciate my blessings, but want to give back to others. Um, and that's, I think, that's one of the, I think if we as a community, all of us who have the income, and a lot of us have the income, mm -hmm. um, really leverage that to help others, I think we'd be in a different place. I, I really believe we would be in a different place. And, and also give our knowledge, give our time. When I was at Bank of America, I, I would um, volunteer to go to, it was a lot of immigrants, um, black and brown immigrants, and it was Catholic church charities. I would volunteer and go teach them how to interview, review their resumes, stuff like that. I think we don't do enough of that. I don't think we give enough of our time. I also volunteered at... Um, food shelters, Capital Food Bank. And I said recently, I would love to take my sons um, to do that. Well, one of my sons had the opportunity to go to a soup kitchen mm -hmm. just so he can see and give back and see that there are so many people less fortunate and that he should be grateful for the life his father and I had provided for him. How does that transition into entrepreneurship? That's what I'm trying to link well, to because I see a lot you know, people give because we think it's the humane thing to do, mm -hmm. right? We want to support each other, things like that. We want to support, especially if we have the blessing, if we were blessed with mm -hmm. a lot, we want to be able to give back. Mm -hmm. right? But do you think that there's a correlation with that and becoming a better entrepreneur? A hundred. make you? A hundred percent. Entrepreneur affords me the opportunity to give, right? That does afford me the opportunity to give, but it also affords me the opportunity to open doors for others right? Who may not know that I can do that. That person looks like me. I didn't come from a wealthy family. I didn't. Um, I wasn't born with a silver spoon in my mouth. I remember growing up eating government cheese. I mean, I know it's not funny. <laughs> I'm serious. Okay. So, I mean, so I think if we see it, we can envision it, we can do it. And so someone seeing, okay, a little brown face like mine, letting them know I could do that. Mm -hmm. And me interacting with them saying, you could do it. Mm -hmm. Come with a certain skill set, develop that. Come with certain disciplines, you can do it. How long did it take you to apply those disciplines? Because like, I'm, I'm, I'm 
this is what the energy you give. And we were talking about energy. Earlier, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, energy mm -hmm. you know, is a motivator. I protect my energy now. Mm. Like I, I, I talk to people on the phone or I determine whether I want to do something uh -huh. based off the energy that I'm feeling. Right? Okay. Because sometimes you can absorb the wrong energy. Yeah. And it, it, it turns your day to power. Yeah. Right? In your mood. But how is it that this 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 process of yours, because I'm 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 feel, feeling the energy, this whole journey, how long did it take for you to become Lori now? Yeah. I'm still evolving. You I'm never stop. Evolving. You never stop. Um I'm still realizing I need to protect my energy. Right? Um, that's even in my personal life, right? Um I actually, I'm, I'm, I'm an advocate for therapy. Oh, me too. I'm in therapy. <laughs> Not there yet. But I, I, am I am in my therapy. When I see certain people, I'm like, well, you need therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the first one to be like, therapy. But I know I need. Yeah. I know I need. Yeah. I'm just not having gone there yet. So, but I've been reading the books. Okay. To, to do the shadow work and then. Okay. Like that. But I'm glad you brought that. Well, go ahead. Okay. I'm a big advocate for therapy. Uh, like I said, I'm in it myself. Um, it gives you some, allows you to kind of stop and look at yourself, right? In doing that, it has helped me to say no to certain things. Mm -hmm. Now, I was always a people pleaser growing up. Like I recently, and when I say recently, at the age, I'm 52, not mm -hmm. scared to say it. At the age of 52, I just started setting boundaries in my personal life. Okay. I'm not trying to get to your personal life. Yes, you are. Because you set the boundaries. Yes, you are. But I do want to ask, <laughs> what led to that? Though? Was it something that led to that? Or was what it, led to therapy or what, know, led, what to... led to... Well, it could be both. It could be both. It could have been that one thing that led to therapy. <laughs> or it could be... That one thing that says, you know what, therapy's right. Let me set these boundaries. Which one is it? And what? what I mean, it's up to you. No, no, I'm just trying to figure it out right okay. now. Um, therapy is right. So it's a combination of what you just said. Um, I started to set boundaries, and in therapy, it's given me the courage. It's given me the assurance because sometimes you don't know if what you're thinking is right. right. Um, and I always want to be fair and I always want to be respectful in when I deliver, how I say, how I move through, through life. So therapy has really helped me um, to bounce some things off of somebody else who has no dog in the fight. Mm. Okay. So that's what therapy has allowed me to do. It gives me the, also it gives you a certain level of accountability mm -hmm. because I go back weekly. And then there's that question, okay, how did we do with this? You know, uh, so, you know, and then my sister, uh, my sister, I love her to pieces, is also my accountability partner. Because I, again, I have, I have had a hard time setting boundaries. So I've allowed certain behaviors to happen um, that probably should not have happened. Or probably the moment they should, they happened, I should have stopped it right away. Yeah. Yes, uh, I agree with everything you mm -hmm. said. And then uh, I'm an advocate for you for saying that, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, a lot of entrepreneurs that we've had on the show and the ones that admitted out loud that said they were in therapy or they gone through therapy are the ones that are the most outgoing really yeah because they're they're open about who they are yes they become authentic mm -hmm. right because they are, they are aware of you know yeah i'm not perfect mm -hmm. and you know there's some things that i'm still working on and i think that that's why the combination of you guys that are open that open about the fact that you're going to therapy mm -hmm. makes it a lot easier for you to be open with everybody. Yeah. 
And I think that's wonderful. I'm being authentic to who I really am. Yeah. yeah. And as I'm discovering who I really am. Oh, that, that's true, too. I had an episode with Keenan. Keenan, Keenan raised $100 million for his company, um, Rizzy, which is an apartment uh, direct from consumer where there's no middleman. You can just, so there's no bias or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So you can automatically, um, if you see an apartment, you click on the app, you purchase it right then and there, mm -hmm. and it's yours, right? You go in. Okay. So there's no uh, realtor, there's no meeting with the, the actual owner. Just oh wow, smooth content, right? Mm -hmm. So, and he was on the show recently, and he was talking about the fact that he's gone through therapy mm -hmm. and the evolution of who he is. And we both were talking about how it's important to to get that mental clarity, right? Mm -hmm. But the most important thing is to recognize, you know, some of the things that you went through and that yeah. you probably weren't aware of, and the hurt and the traumas and all that. Stuff. Yeah. But he, we all came to this conclusion that it is very helpful because it makes you a better entrepreneur because you can see things clearly. Yeah, right. So I agree. You're not based off emotions from past trauma or hurt. I agree. You start to love yourself more. Mm -hmm. right? And so, no, that's a hundred percent. But anything you want to give, any suggestions or something that you want to get people so that way they can get started into their life, into their journey. I would say one of the most important things that we as a community don't realize that's extremely important is credit. Credit. So part of the process of becoming an Amazon contractor is they check your credit, right? Um, managing your credit. Now, people may say, my credit's not good, so that means I'm excluded. No, you can rebuild your credit. And it doesn't take a lot make payments on time. And if you owe people, pay it off. Come up with a payment arrangement. Creditors are willing to do that. So I'd say credit is important. And then learn, you know, I say learn because not everybody knows how to do that. Learn how to save. Learn how to save. It takes money to make money. And that's a true statement. It does take money. Can you start a business without money? Yes, you can, but for the most part, you need money, right? Especially if you're going to have employees and things of that nature. So you have to come to the table with some. So learn how to save, learn how to put money aside, learn how to sacrifice short term for the long term gain. So say no to those Yeezys. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I learned. <laughs> And put that money in the bank. Yeah, money in the bank. So when, when I started saving, I started realizing that I had, you know, the thing about when you start making money, your lifestyle tends to stretch. Mm -hmm. Say more. Because you, right, because you feel like, oh, I got money now. I can do X, 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 Y. Yeah. But that's the time where when you start making more money, mm -hmm. the time you start paying down your debt, you start to build up a, a nesting egg mm -hmm. so that way you have a lot of savings. So to your point, you can start a company without money, but to grow your company, yes. you're going to need money. And so you're going to need you know, investors, or you're going to need banks, you're going to need loans, you or even if you want to Which is credit. All that is credit, right? right? Because people want to know how you manage your finances. Right. So then when they're looking at your, your numbers, the P&L, mm -hmm. they want to see, okay, yeah. is this, you know, how do you manage your stuff? So I, I agree 100%, but I think that the saving piece is is very important because you, if you, the more money you have, the more you can uh, tackle, the quicker you can be on, on the offense versus being on the defense and trying yeah. to make something happen yeah but uh, yeah put the money aside for the, yeah leave the yeah. pieces alone yeah. temporarily temporarily I, and I, then you can afford more than that <laughs> well you know we, we want to get up to you know your yes, standards where you're making like a little, little over three million you know, Just a, what, next year it'll be way more than that well, i'm super excited for you. thank you i appreciate yeah. that so do you feel that this is the right fit right now at this at this point in my life, 100%, this is the right fit. But again, like I said, I'm always looking for opportunities. I'm actively looking. 
That doesn't mean I'm going to stop doing this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this till the wheels fall off, right? Um, but I am still going to look for other opportunities. That's good. Well, we're glad yeah. to hear Thank you for being on this show. Well, thank you, you for having anything me. Anything you want to add, last before we wrap things up? Anybody can do it. Anybody can become an entrepreneur. You just have to decide that's something you want to do. I'm glad you said that. Give me three things that you think will make a great entrepreneur. Discipline. You have to be disciplined. Um, being a motivator, whether it's motivating yourself, because a lot of times as an entrepreneur, what I've learned is as I've grown, it can be lonely. It can be really lonely because not everyone has your experiences. Uh, so motivating yourself and motivating others and then have a village, have a community, have people that when you're having one of those moments that can encourage you. And then one of the things, it's not three, it's four, protect your energy. Watch who's around you and get rid of that negative speak. Mm -hmm. I'm reading a book about manifestation and alignment. Mm -hmm. That's some real stuff. It starts with how we think. Everything is mindset. Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally. Mm -hmm. it's mindset. Totally. One thing I've, I've learned recently, well, not, I've, I've known this for such a long time, but I think I'm becoming more aware of it, you know, because you can know something, mm -hmm. but you're not aware of it. Mm -hmm. so it's just like subconsciously it's, it sits there dormant mm -hmm. until you bring it to light and then you're like, oh man. I know this, but why haven't I applied it? Right. And the one thing I, I've noticed recently is that not only uh, things are mental, because we attract the things that's in our lives, mm -hmm. right? but it's verbal, right? So what we think, we tend to say, right? And then we cause that into our lives. So you got to change your mind. You got to change your, your, your speech. You got to change how you think. And it's not vocabulary. It's mm -hmm. just how you, it's how you phrase it. You want to phrase it in a positive way where yeah. you're giving yourself affirmation, self-affirmation. I do daily affirmations. Okay. I It's called I am affirmation. Mm -hmm. I do it every morning. And mm -hmm. how important is that? Because it's part of protecting your energy. Mm -hmm. right? And it's all mental. It is. And if you can take care of this and stop same watch which you, yeah. yeah and then the people here's another thing the people around you say negative things that seeps into your subconscious yeah. and you start thinking it mm -hmm. you're and right you're wondering where i get this self-talk from and it's not even yours right you ever been around someone for so long or for, for frequently mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden you start talking like them yeah happens yeah so if you mm -hmm. have a negative person you got to talk like a negative mm -hmm. Or I say, I don't receive that. I now verbalize it. If somebody said something crazy, I don't receive that. No. At all. Mm -hmm. But if you have somebody that's positive. Yes. And they spread in the, you know, all good things, all well things, all things that's po positive mm -hmm. for you. Then being around them, you're going to start speaking that language. So right. you're going to change. Mm -hmm. So it's important to protect your energy and the people around you. 100%. Thank you so much, Monica. Thank you, Sam. And having us here and, and occupying your time and your space. My pleasure. Uh, so when I do my next business venture, I got to hit you back up. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'll be the first one here. Okay, okay. Right. You're not on social media at all. Yeah, no. I yeah, no. I was about to say, hey, let the people know where they yeah, can reach you. And I realized... You're not on social media. No, I'm not big on you're, social media. You're one of those quiet millionaires. <laughs> I'm not big on social media. You're right. I'm not.